Hey everybody and welcome to the Inferno Cast, episode number 042. I am Inferno Fox, host and both of the podcast as well as of the YouTube channel of Inferno Fox Gaming. And we are on, of course, here on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and more. Joining me tonight is my full cast and crew here. We're, we're all back. We're all here. We're, we're, we're a full party here. And th that will be related to the topic. Uh, let me introduce, starting off with Jamie Owls. Jamie Owls, 87, my partner and partner in crime. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello. I'm happy to be here. And happy to, to have you here as well. We also have Jason the 13th of the YouTube channel, Jason the 13th. Jason, thank you for joining. Not a problem at all. Any new videos coming up? Uh, I do have uh, another part recorded. I just got to get it posted. <laughs> uh, it's been slow going. I, th I think at some point we need to do a, when more information about the new Legends, Pokemon Legends game, Ooh, you and yeah. I need to do a uh, our own separate discussion about that. I think that's right, cool. interesting. Uh, next up, we have Stormrose Sky of the Twitch and YouTube channels of Stormrose Sky. Storm, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And I'm still just a girl who wants Kratos back in the Fortnite store. That is all. <laughs> He's coming. Yeah, eventually. He's coming. He won't disappoint you. He's he not there, there now. I'm just letting you know. He's not there now. <laughs> He will Dang be it. though, but he will be not eventually. Maybe I know. God. Not going to happen. He anyway, will. moving on. If you believe, if you believe that he returns, he will. <laughs> also joining us is Hillbilly Hardicus. He's a good friend and our resident hill slot. Hardicus, thank you so much for joining us. Hello, thanks for having me again. Uh, we also have Astromedes, developer and co-owner of Second Place Games. Astromedes, welcome and welcome back. Thank you. Just got back from a long road trip from Illinois to Texas and back over the last two weeks, and I'm adjusting to a not nomadic lifestyle again. <laughs> nice. I, I bet you're, you're probably glad to not have to, when you're trying to fall asleep, dreaming that you're still driving all, all over the place. <laughs> Whenever I go on road trips, that, that's what happens to me. <laughs> No, not so much. It's more like I drive around here in Illinois. I'm like, why is all the why is this drive so flat and boring? I haven't worried about <laughs> falling off a mountain once today. <laughs> oh, not yet. Gosh. Not yet. <laughs> um, and finally, we have Simbu Darkfang, host of the SFWF show that it plays both on Sunday and Wednesday nights on Twitch at 7 p.m. Central. Simbu, thank you so much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to be here. And uh, always a pleasure to, to, to have you and I have the rest of the cast here. Before we jump into our main topic, let's have a pre-discussion topic. One, uh, and th th this is one that, that I haven't asked you guys in a while. What are you currently playing right now? What are you playing right now? Let's start with Hardicus. Hardicus, what video games are you playing right now? Uh, right now, I just finished Ayudin Chronicle Rising last week and have started the, I don't know if you want to call it sequel or whatnot, but the Ayudin Chronicle 100 Heroes Ooh. Uh, with the X, with the Microsoft Game Pass. Um, and as uh, <laughs> World of Warcraft is my other kind of staple to go to. I've been playing that for far too long. <laughs> how are um, how you liking the Ayudin uh, Chronicles, like that prequel game or first entry or, or whatnot and then the the full entry rising was more of a like a metroidvania type game um it was it was pretty decent um you know the the scenes uh the graphics were all really nice looking and you know i like those old school kind of pixelated graphics but like the backgrounds were really i thought beautiful in some scenes uh story was just Okay, but um, the reason I mainly played it is because I've been looking forward to 100 Heroes for a while, and the description said that this is kind of a, you know, not necessarily a prequel, but it's going to have characters and locations and kind of introduces you to the world of 100 Heroes, so I wanted to knock that out before I, uh, I started 100 Heroes, and so far 100 Heroes is really good. Uh, if anyone's played Suikoden, 
it is essentially a spiritual successor to that and it is it, other than the name it to me it's very very similar so far i'm only like an hour or two in though nice awesome i, I definitely will end up picking your brain about that more because i that, that's going to be one that i'm going to end up picking up just because i i, I want to get into suikoden because that's that's part what well, that's one of my jr jrpg pl- blind spots uh wouldn't wouldn't mind getting some experience on that so very cool yeah, there's um I believe the remaster just got for one and two just got delayed. I don't I I don't know how long it's been delayed, but it was supposed to come out in April twenty third, I believe, but it's been pushed back. So that would probably be a good place to start. Um number three was I if I remember right really good. I don't remember how four was. And I don't know if I ever played five. And I, I don't know if there was another one after that, but I'm pretty sure it was only one, two, and three are the only ones that stick in my mind as being good. Yeah, and I think because it was one and two on the PS one, and then three through five on the on the PS two. That sounds right. Nice, cool. Um, so, uh, Jamie Owls, how about you? What are you currently playing right now? Oh, you know, Alone in the Dark, The Sims, uh, Paper Mario, and I'm also playing in between Animal Crossing and uh, Story of Seasons. So I have a handful. Nice. Trying to finish them all at once is kind of hard. Because, <laughs> you know, work. I have to do that. I, I, I guess. I guess we have to do that. I guess. And so yeah. for for our friends joining us uh Audibly, or if you just just catch the podcast, Jamie Owls and I just released a video on Sunday where we, her and I went over the games that we're playing as well as what we're going to be playing next. So make sure that you you check that out. Uh, brief summary for me, playing Xenoblade 2. Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying to get, to get through it. I did beat the main <laughs> game, doing the DLC. I... I have a lot of things to say about Xenoblade 2. Um, yeah, I'm going to exercise my <laughs> right to, to plead the fifth from from saying anything else. Jason, all good th- things, all good things. Uh, no, 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 I, I didn't say that. Didn't say that. Jason the 13th, how about you? What are you uh, playing right now? I haven't been playing hardly anything. A little bit of what? Fortnite, a little bit of Pokemon, and a little bit of Pokemon Black 2 since I've never played it before and just picked it up at Midwest Gaming. So <laughs> nice. Yeah, hopefully you can get back into some some good games and um mm-hmm. join the dark side here with, with yes. all of us. <laughs> yes. Speaking of dark side, Astromedes, I know you said you were living the, the nomadic life, but did you do any gaming during that at all? How about any anything before that? I didn't do any gaming during it. I actually used this road trip as sort of like a no screen time kind of thing. I actually read books printed on he paper, unplugged. Uh, which I hadn't <laughs> done in a long time. Uh, <laughs> I did. I haven't really been playing much in general, but I will mention uh, kind of tangential game related uh, me and my wife, who is not act, who is not really much of a game player or anything like that, doesn't really have any familiarity with modern games in general. Uh, we both watched and really enjoyed all of the Fallout series on Amazon Prime, which definitely uh, surpassed my extremely low expert uh, expectations <laughs> for it. Did Did you really, really say good. tangential? I did. <laughs> That's what I heard. Okay. <laughs> And it's funny. So shows like, uh, shoot, f- shows like Fallout and The Last of Us and Tangentials really uplift the overall uh, quality for these, like the these video game adaptations. I know we here at the Inferno Cast have touched upon this before, uh, the whole video games to movies, TVs, and 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 whatnot. But like, uh, honestly, I th- I feel like sky's the limit, and this probably is the replacement for superhero hero fatigue and i again i know i know we touched upon that uh, so i don't want to go too much in the tree hole there but yeah you know, I'll, I'll just mention that like what this series does is and like most of these new good app well i don't even know about most but i'll just say for fallout like it does what i always say these game adaptations should do which is 
Don't worry about focusing on what actually happened in the game. Use that universe as a setting. And that's exactly what the show does really well. And I was actually reading that the kind of showrunner uh, had kind of, he was very familiar with the Fallout games and he reached out to Bethesda himself with like his ideas for making a Fallout series. So it was actually, and the interesting thing too is that Bethesda now says that everything that happens in the Fallout series is canon in the fallout universe they mm. work closely to set the timelines up so that everything in the show does make sense and can be kind of inserted cleanly into the timeout of the fallout games and i wouldn't be surprised if one of the next games actually takes place say after the show's events to kind of let all that have occurred so funny you say that uh, uh, what i'm hearing behind the scenes is microsoft has all the sudden all of a sudden gotten on bethesda to accelerate their fallout 5 development wonder why <laughs> yeah interesting <huh? laughs> i had also heard that uh and i don't know how true it is but i read that um well some of the ideas that they had originally pitched for the show uh todd howard from bethesda said no 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 don't do that that's something we're actually doing in fallout 5 <laughs> again don't know how true that is but yeah i mean i i wouldn't be surprised just i i read a pretty long interview where it was uh todd howard and i forget the name of like the showrunner screenwriter i don't know exactly what his role is on the show but he's the guy who reached out <laughs> bethesda and it sounds like there was like a long like working relationship in setting all that up so i would not be at all surprised mm -hmm. if things came up and they said no that's for the game yeah, because I mean, there's pr probably a lot of ideas that get spitballed during the um, the whole writing process, and mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of lore that 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 is within the Fallout world. I mean, it's it's really kind yeah, of an especially amazing since thing. the the game span, you know, like many years. Like the the first game is, you know, I want to say like maybe less than a hundred years after the bombs fell or whatever. But then like they keep kind of scaling the timeline up for a lot of the games and the series is. Um, 230 some years i want to say after the bombs actually fell and which is further ahead than any of the games had gone so you can see that how that creates kind of a cleaner starting point for the show where it's after all the events and all the games by a good amount i want to say uh that new vegas maybe is the one that was furthest forward in time and that was a hundred something years after the bombs fell so they advanced the timeline pretty significantly for the series which is kind of interesting yeah, and I, th and I thought Fallout 76 was one of the ones that was the earliest in in the series, if I remember right. Uh, I, I don't know for sure, but that seems like I that would make that's sense. Correct. Yeah. I, I think Fallout 4 is the, the farthest one in, like, the, the, the newer, like, you know, the farthest in the timeline, if I remember it correctly. But oh, okay. You, you might be correct with, with New Vegas. I don't know the timeline exactly. Interesting. So very cool to to see a really good show to be be released out there. Uh, season two is already confirmed. They're they're working on it again. No surprise. So very nice. Uh, Storm, how about you? What are you currently playing right now? Animal Crossing and <laughs> Fortnite. Not a whole bunch of new stuff because we're in the midst of moving and whatnot. And if I start a new game and get into it and then get interrupted, I'm going to have to um, go back and restart mm -hmm. because I won't feel I won't feel comfortable enough with a newer game to just like get into it. And, you know, it's a little bit jarring. So I will pick up some new stuff when we get uh, once we get moved and settled, like by Mortal Kombat and Hogwarts. I do still have to play those, so you know eventually, and uh, but I may be looking at a Tomb Raider or something before oh. that. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see what happens. But for right now, Fortnite and Animal Crossing are just hitting, you know, the attention span just the right way. So nice and and really moving. Moving is one of the most stressful experiences being an an adult, and nothing mm -hmm. helps dealing with stress than than playing some of those comfort food games like i i last year i was dealing with a, a layoff when i worked for the the tech industry and the timing was horribly perfect for square saw or square enix to release the first six final fantasies on the nintendo switch and like that became my comfort comfort food in between job hunting and job posting and, and everything like that so it's it's nice having that that that, that sort of comfort food gaming mm -hmm. exactly and 
you know, with Animal Crossing, I never have finished their um, oh, the DLC that they came out with, the Happy Homes Paradise or whatever. You have to build 30 villager homes in order to get the final celebration. Well, I never finished that ever. So I'm working on that little bit by little bit. So that makes Animal Crossing, I'm air quoting, newer <laughs> to me again or exciting because, you know, Oh, it's time for an update for that, but that's again another great <laughs> for another podcast with, <clears throat> yep. <laughs> with Nintendo. So but that's where I'm at now. <clears throat> nice. Uh Simbu, how about you? What are you currently playing right now? I am currently spreading democracy to all the bugs and terminators that have infested the galaxy for Super Earth. Of course, I'm talking Helldivers 2. Nice. While Very signed nice. into your PlayStation Online account, I assume. <laughs> I was waiting for <laughs> Mike to say something. Well, I thought you were talking I mean... about the cicadas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I play on PS5, so I don't have to worry about all that. Yeah. <laughs> that was apparently obviously... a big hullabaloo on Steam. <laughs> oh, yeah. I watched the whole thing. I actually left the Helldivers 2 Discord server because of it. I was just, oh my God, will you all just shut up and quit whining? Yeah, um, it's unfortunate. I mean, obviously the only ones, that, the people that I, I do feel the, the worst for were the ones in the countries who couldn't, who PSN is not supported in, so they would not actually be able to play the game. Yeah, um, for, for people not aware, uh, Helldivers 2, shortly, basically on release uh, in the Steam version, they had disabled uh, PlayStation Network sign-in and not required it, even though the game's description always said a PlayStation Online count was required. And then not long ago, however many weeks ago, whatever it is at this point, they turned it back on. So it once again is a requirement which caused a barrage of very negative Steam reviews and negative sentiment in the Helldivers 2 community and everything. Um, it's kind of a tricky thing because I, I feel for the devs because I'm sure it was a requirement all along, and I'm sure that they probably turned it off maybe as a result of the initial kind of server load issues and all that just to try kind of right. remove some of the noise. Um, so it's a shame that, you know, probably right when the game hits a more kind of stable uh, coasting uh, position here that this uh, is really going to affect people's perception of the game potentially. Well, yeah. uh, to add to that real quickly, Inferno Fox, before you uh, close us out on this, um, Sony has retracted that um, due to the backlash. Uh, Sony has, you know, released a tweet saying that they're not going to require it. Um, they're trying, you know, as they're still trying to figure out what's best for the PC community, of course, whatever, yada, yada, yada. Um, I'm a Sony guy, and I will say it. I don't care how bad Sony got bashed on the reviews for Helldivers 2. The hmm. thing that were made that hurt that made me hurt the most was that could have belly up Arrowhead, which is a tiny, tiny studio. And that Arrowhead was the one that I felt the worst for. Sony, yeah, and, you know, they got review yeah. bombed once in a while. So what? They'll still be Sony. And, and, <laughs> and, and it just begs the question, is it really fair for Arrowhead and the game itself when it's a quality product and a quality studio to get bombed when it was the owning company itself that, that makes this decision? Uh, I, no, I'm not looking to start a dialogue on that in of itself. Of course, if you, the listener slash viewer, want to go ahead and discuss it in the comments section below, we can start a dialogue there with that. But yeah, it, it, it's something that it, it, it could be described as a mild annoyance having to set up and create a PSN, but that the, the will be the wave of the future. And Ghost of Tsushima is already starting to now get backlash because of this when that releases in, a, in about a week in Steam. But the PC users were under no illusions that Ghost of Tsushima on PC that was always going to require PSN login. There was that that was that the way that was since the start, and now that's starting to get backlash. So then it begs the question: Okay, are we are we just review bombing for review bomb's sake, or is this a, is something that's actually worth it? Either way, I think it's a good thing that some sort of progress was was known or given or heated or whatnot. 
uh, that, that Sony listens to that. There's proof that Sony does because they've done it before when it came to like the closing of the PSP slash PS3 shop a few years back. Uh, it's important to note other companies won't do this. The number one company I'm thinking of that would never do that or never listen to the consumer is Nintendo. If Nintendo had put something like this, no matter how much people would complain, they would not stop and that's been proven <laughs> with the wii u and 3ds shop closures uh that, that had been a whole big controversy for the last year year or so um one a, a couple other little things in the, in the news uh happy to hear that nintendo has announced the switch successor they have not said what it is but it has actually officially been announced by the japanese uh nintendo of japan president at like i think uh 2 a.m or something uh central time because of course it was morning time for the investors meeting in in japan uh at, at that point uh but more importantly i just want to say that uh myself and everyone here at the inferno cast uh definitely feels for everybody that had been impacted by the layoffs today that microsoft has done uh impacting our arcane austin alpha dog tango gameworks roundhouse games uh, I'm reading off a list off my phone because I don't want to miss anybody. So uh, again, as I just mentioned uh, about five, 10 minutes ago, I've been through layoffs. Uh, I didn't just mention that just to mention it. I mentioned it because I wanted to say this and that's just uh, myself, everyone here. We we feel for you guys and uh, we definitely appreciate all the help and hard work that that you that you, you have provided. Again, we understand that these are Microsoft Xbox studios. Most of us are Nintendo and Sony uh, system players, but we see we see you. We we know quality product when uh, when we see it, and we do see it with stuff like Prey, Dishonored, especially stuff like like Hi-Fi Rush and, and everything like that. So again, we're, we're we're sorry for for that. But let's get into some happy stuff. We're we're, we're going to get into happy stuff because we got we got everybody here. We we want to get the party started, and we're going to be talking about party games. And specifically, we're going to be touching touching upon Mario Party and the Jackbox Party Packs. And why these two specifically? Because I feel they encompass the overall party genre. There are other genres that have multiplayer capabilities and party settings, you know, like Smash Brothers, Mario Kart, Rock Band, uh, and like Halo for my 20s, for example, come to mind. But Mario Party and Jack Jackbox are truly meant to be played at parties, and they're almost always a lot of fun. Um, I, I want to start the dialogue first with, with Mario Party, because um, I feel like with all of us here, we we probably all have the least amount of experience with, with Mario Party. Uh, Jamie Owls and Jason the 13th, obviously, I know you've played Mario Party because mm -hmm. I, I've seen you guys play literally recently. Um, <laughs> Storm... Um, how about you? Have you played Mario Party much, Storm? I have Super Mario Party. I actually bought it for the Switch. Oh, nice. And then the person that made me buy it, um, we no longer speak because um, that's a long, drawn-out family drama story. So um, I've not played it. I have it and bought it with intention to play it with this individual, but I've never played it. So... I have oh. no experience with Mario Party. I need to fix that. So we all need to set something up so I can play. Yeah, yeah. Def definitely. Um, I Super Mario Party is decent. I love Mario Party Superstars um, because and both of these you can play online if you connect with friends. If I remember right, you you can actually do that. So it's pretty cool. Um, and Hardicus, I think before we started, you mentioned uh, you played a total of twenty minutes, thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I was exaggerating, but uh, like, yeah, like I have very little uh, time in a Mario Party game. Um, I want to say I, the, the last one I probably played was somewhere around like Super Nintendo era. Does that sound about right? Do they have one for the Super Nintendo? Yeah. <laughs> they don't have one for the Super uh, Nintendo? 64, okay, I was... believe, is the first one. <laughs> and then it must have been after that because <laughs> I don't even remember when it was. That's how That's how little fun I had with it little experience i've had with it <laughs> no that's cool um simbu how about you uh have you had any mario party experience um very little uh i mean i've probably played it a couple times 
you know, with friends over or maybe with you guys or something, but very little. It's not really one that piques my interest um, so much as uh, just not really my style of game. I know it's, you know, everyone has a lot of fun with it and that's great. Just not really me, not really for me. Gotcha. And Estramides, how about you? Uh, I'd say I've played maybe like, you know, <laughs> five to 10, like complete games played start to finish across, you know, a few different entries in the series. Um, probably some of them with, uh, at least Inferno Fox in this group here. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think I've played, you know, at least one on GameCube. I played the Switch one pretty recently for the first time. Uh, and, yeah, probably maybe one more somewhere else in there uh, among the consoles, whatever. Uh, but, yeah, I've, I've played them a bit. I'm, like, familiar enough with their mechanics. It's similarly not necessarily, like, the kind of game I normally choose to play because i tend to go for more kind of like mastery type games uh which we'll talk more about uh how that factors into party games probably here shortly but uh a bit of experience familiar enough but uh definitely not intimately familiar i'd say gotcha and, and let's actually touch upon that because a lot of the times with mario party uh because really it just it, it just consists of like being on a game board but Mostly it's a bunch of mini mini games that are played and they're centered around uh, like f up to four people playing at once where they select a character. Doesn't matter what character that you pick. They all have the same abilities based upon the actual mini game itself, uh, with the exception of Luigi. If you pick Luigi, you're going to win. Um, I have not <laughs> seen a game of Mario Party Superstars where Luigi has not won, so... Uh, if you pick <laughs> Luigi, you will win because Luigi is the best character. Um, the determining factor of winning is the acquisition of the stars, hence uh, superstars or the Mario Party uh, it, itself. That that was the the story mode of the very first Mario Party on, on the sixty four. Uh, one of the the um, interesting things with with Mario Party itself is that it kind of kept the num the numbering structure of being called Mario Party One up to mario party 10 on the wii u it, besides any of the the handheld versions um and of course the switch versions which you could argue is a handheld but it's a hybrid uh it's always been numbered one through ten um so really astromedes and simple you you guys really i i totally get the eh, it doesn't really i'm not worried about it as much because how can you master a game that has over a hundred different mini games without playing it over and over and consistently. It's almost like the WarioWare uh, sort of thought process, except WarioWare is a single player game and mini games usually last 30 to 60 seconds, whereas a WarioWare game lasts anywhere from one to like five seconds. Uh, is there something to and and ask me these, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you this first. Uh, is there something to be said about the fact that there's not mastery that that sort of kind of loses the interest with that, thus leaning more towards the family and kid genre, or is it the fact that an individual could be good at all of the games, thus mastering the ability to adapt? I mean, I think it it. it... I mean, I, I'm sure it's possible to generally improve your performance after playing the game a bunch of times. I mean, the obvious thing would be just getting familiar with the mini games to the point where you're not, you know, the oftentimes I feel like when playing these games, like there's almost always at least one person in the group who, you know, maybe hasn't played as much as the other ones. A new mini game starts and they say, how does this one work? And they, they spend, you know, the first one second, like kind of adjusting to like getting their bearings in this unfamiliar game. So I think it is possible <laughs> to get some level of mastery, but I mean, it does feel like the, to me, the Mario party take on, making it uh, an inclusive, party-friendly game is the fact that they intentionally try to remove 
mastery from the equation when it comes to who's going to win just things like you know randomly mainly just how the stars get kind of randomly shuffled around with the awards whatever throughout the entries <laughs> i remember that being you know a big one that just feels like well none of what we just did mattered you know whatever <laughs> and you know and i'm someone who plays games that and you know the other aspect is just the dice you know a lot of what happens is actually just going to be determined by that dice roll <laughs> of where you end up and you know what it ended up doing to everyone's rankings whatever um um, but, uh, you know, like I'm someone who does play games with, you know, a lot of randomly generated content, you know, so arguably, you know, you could say, oh, the, you know, the dice mechanic in Mario Party, how is that different than the, you know, randomly generated dungeon in, you know, the roguelike game you were playing, uh, being easy or hard purely based on, you know, how it worked out. So like the, I'd say like the purposes are different, you know, like the, in a single Single player game things are essentially a lot different fundamentally a lot different too because you know it's not you're probably not either you beat the game or you don't but you're not beating any other players around you it's like it's just the experience is easier or hard but it doesn't necessarily affect much versus you know in a competitive game the how you do obviously determines you know who's going to win and therefore you know who's not going to win so to me it's like the mario party approach to kind of taking mastery out of the equation at least some extent is the fact that they you know they use randomness in a way that uh intentionally tries to kind of like shuffle the results and minimize you know the impact of someone who is beating all the mini games compared to the other players say yeah, and that make that makes sense because I've noticed where, well, the the randomness because how random can computer RNG Jeebus really be? Like you you tend to start to pick up some patterns and everything like that, and maybe that's just our own subconscious picking up on that. When in reality, maybe we really can't pick up on computer RNG Jeebus, but. Jason Thirteenth, let me let me get your th thoughts on this. What do you? How do you feel the the overall um, mastery versus adaptability versus the whole family aspect with these games with Mario Party? Well, um, I would have to say, in my opinion, Nintendo tries to take the mastery out. Most of the mini games that I re can recall are pretty simple, to where most people can get the hang of it pretty quick. And I know the newer Mario. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Simbo <laughs> repeatedly hit the buttons, you know, <laughs> but uh, they have uh, before them each mini game, they have that little uh, practice time. So people can actually get it to that before they jump. That was it. smart. That does mitigate oh, yeah. a lot of like what and, I talked about the first yes. second of figuring out how it works. Yeah. And I believe that's a newer thing. I think since and, super Mario yeah, party, I, the I last could be couple, wrong. Yeah. Right. But, uh, um, oh my God, I'm losing my train of thought here. Um, I think Nintendo's, the Mario parties are more strictly for like a family game night. Like what Monopoly used to be before everyone decides to get pissed off, throw the board across the room <laughs> and say they're never going to talk to their family ever again. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but that's kind of, I think what they were going for is like family game night. And because it is literally you're playing on a game board and it's just that luck of the dice roll that and yes computer generated rolls are probably not nearly as random as rolling real dice but eh, it's as close as you're going to get in the games and you and you always fun have fact, go ahead Simbo. fun fact this podcast the first time Jason the 13th and I have talked since our last game of monopoly <laughs> <laughs> We went many, many years without talking to each other after playing Monopoly until Inferno Fox invited us both to join the Inferno cast. Mending fences one podcast at a time. <laughs> but it, and it's funny too, what with like Mar Mario Party itself. Some I've noticed that sometimes they uh tend to pick a certain scapegoats to give all the rotten luck luck to, you know. Like yes. ma making certain players have to take the Bowser route every single time or giving those same players, you know, double snake eyes when they have double <laughs> dice or, 
you know, st stuff like that. J Jason 13th, you know what I mean? Do you, do you have any yeah. idea? When you play it enough times, yes, you'll <laughs> end up seeing that happen to people. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, the last time we just played not long ago, uh, yeah, I got the Bowser out like every time I went past. <laughs> yeah, it, it was funny because like you, I remember that uh, some out ago and you were like, uh, you had the worst luck. You were in fourth place, and then all of a sudden, you just go on a blank spot, and then oh, oh, here's a star. Okay, so you went from fourth to first, or something like that. Yep. That 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 as Astromedius was saying that that's kind of how Mario Party is. It's mm -hmm. it's the millennial medal for the Gen Z generation, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Jamie Owls, how about you? What are your what are your thoughts overall with the Mario Party series? I think they're fun. I know I haven't played a lot of them, but um, the most recent one I played with you guys, it was it was definitely fun. And I could see how it's a family game to, you know, even get like your parents involved if you ever wanted to play with them. Um, just like with the whole little practice mini games to have them. And I feel like those kind of games can... Um, you know, just, you know, fun nights for people. Like, instead of playing typical board games with your family, you could just pop in Mario Party, and then you could still play with all your whole family. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it would definitely agree with you. It's a lot of fun and being being able to to do that. I, I Jason 13th, Mobster, and I played the first three Mario Parties on the Nintendo 64. I think we re rent, we're aging ourselves here, but we rented them from Blockbuster. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say we enjoyed the second one the most, Jason. Uh, I remember it's very vague on those yeah. ones. I know I only own one of them. <laughs> and it's and funny. Even... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jason. I was going to say, I couldn't even tell you which one right offhand without going and looking at my collection. <laughs> yeah. And we never touched the GameCube ones, four through seven. I, I, yeah, I, no. I, I think it's because once Smash Melee came out, that was it. We were, we were done. Yeah, we were, that was we our, were addicted our go, to Smash. Our, our go-to uh, party game, really, uh, for for better or worse. As as, I, as I've gotten older, I've realized I, I could have been playing a lot of really good games, in for even just for the GameCube. And no, Smash Melee. You know, I had, I had to play. Had to play that. <laughs> Um, I, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the Jackbox party packs. Um, now I actually didn't get into Jackbox. I don't have any of the physical copies because there's no freaking point to having a physical copy to an online, literally a game you need an online connection for. Um, I didn't get really get into them until like four years ago, uh, around the event that rhymes with no squid machine. And this event as a whole actually helped bring a lot more eyes to the Jackbox Party Pack as uh, Jason 13th is wondering how uh, yep. Schmeinteen rhymes with no squid. No, 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 no. I'm actually pondering the four years ago. I'm like, really? It's only been four years? Like, it feels <laughs> like it's been so much longer for Jackbox. <laughs> and, and maybe and maybe it's been longer because a certain somebody I want to say in this particular chat and their husband were the ones that introduced introduced Jamie Owls and I to, to Jackbox if I'm remembering right. Mm -hmm. so, so so maybe it was even Bill maybe Billy. Was... <clears throat> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, my Sim husband and I are very much into the Jackbox games. So what can I say? <laughs> Simbu is trying to pick a fight. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a fight into equal love for all but <laughs> the, the nice thing with jackbox is uh people are in isolation of course work to ways to connect with others and jackbox was really good with doing that um some people had animal crossing others among us um quick history lesson jackbox released in 2014 the company that created this jelly vision is known for making the you don't know jack trivia games for the pcs from from the early 90 or early aughts and late nineties. And that's another one that uh, an, a certain someone and their husband in the, the chat got me into. And I remember I, funny thing is there's somebody in that, in the, you don't know, Jack, a guy by the name of cookie actually is a regular voice uh, actor in a number of the Jackbox games. So I think I th thought that was pretty cool. And I think, um said husband of said person in chat actually went to the chicago office once 
am I right on that for said? You are correct. Nice. For said for said person, he had a um he had worked there and that's yeah. So he get, he did get to go to Jelly Vision and uh got to see their office. So that was fun. That's awesome. I I, I loved hearing that. It was cool to 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 see and hear. And the, these games too, cool are are really cool too because of course there's ten packs because since they usually do one every year, uh, each pack contains five unique little games. You don't use your controller to as a controller. You use your phone. You just connect on to the internet with that. Super easy. And groups as small as two or as large as ten plus additional audience members uh, can play. And I'm going to ask the group. Um, with the toll, with the full assumption that maybe none of us remember the names of the the actual games, uh, what is you, one of your favorite games uh, that you like to play? And yeah, I, I'm not I'm not expecting the number of the game, like oh, the the Jack Pack Seven, but like uh, Quiplash, for example, um, Storm. What is one of your favorite Jackbox? games that you like to play there well quiplash i even got the standalone um quiplash so you don't need the jack packs jack box party pack whatever <laughs> um for that one also murder trivia party was a favorite and the, like the one and two of those also um the rap stars i forgot what the name of it what the name oh man verse city yes that's it mm -hmm. man verse city oh that was so much fun and <laughs> it's, it was fun to stream those games and get people involved because then you're you know chaos happens when you get other people to answer things <laughs> yeah. and get to play with people from across the country and whatever those are those are so much fun and they do unfortunately attract the trolls on Twitch, the Jackbox party games mm -hmm. do, but that's what your mods are for and you keep them out. But yeah. anything of a sufficient audience. That I just wanted yes. to comment that I in that I thought it was really clever how in that uh that rap game they had the option where they said either they can read it for you, uh have the their robot voice read it for you, or if I'm remembering correctly, right, that was an option storm. I, the, I don't your, think they can you can choose to have someone else read it for you. I don't know. I, I, I thought there was like I thought that there was a, an option after you like uh wrote it or assembled it or whatever how the mechanic was, you could either have like the robot voice read it or they say you can like read it out loud to the players. Just that just struck me as like a for someone who doesn't want to get up and perform, it's nice to like have <laughs> that other option, whatever. You know, I don't remember seeing that, but I may be Next confusing it, it with another Jackbox game also. <laughs> you may, you may, because I don't remember seeing that, but I do remember that you could either write the rap or have them fill in stuff for you. Yeah. And mo most of the time we just wrote the rap and just tried to pick on one another, you know. It just sounds funnier with the robot voice. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> when they say it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, oh my gosh. Um Jamie Owls, how about you? What is one of your favorite uh, Jackbox games? Uh, number one is Quiplash. I really like that one. Um, I like Job Job, the Madversity, Split the Room. That's another one I like. Um, Fibbage, that's another good one. And I'm actually on the website right now because I couldn't remember most of the games. Um, and there's a lot of them that really stand out to me that I want to play. So we have to have another game night. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, yeah. And, oh. and, and for th those of you watching on, on YouTube, uh, I, I'm sharing one of uh, Jamie Owl's best raps on oh God. Uh, her entry jamie owls do you do, do you want to wrap, wrap this or do you want me to wrap this for you no i could just read it it <laughs> yeah. says i got a crystal ball and i see you defeat i wouldn't mind if you sniffed my feet 
<laughs> Something about you reminds me of pizza because your girl is Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny silliness that uh, a lot of the, the, the Jackbox games have. It's, it's, it's so fun. Yeah, Jamie Ellis, we definitely need to definitely need to do that. Um, we'll figure Storm, we'll figure some sort of way to to get you and your husband included in on that. We we gotta do something to where maybe we have like people who are in Illinois hang out at my at, at our place and then uh Heart of Kiss, Storm and your and your husband. You, uh, you guys connect virtually some way somehow you can mm -hmm. stream it as easy mm -hmm. it's easy to stream and then we just join like anybody else and you know with the jackbox yeah. code with the code thing you don't need to it's nice you don't have to be in the same room you know so yeah, yeah true yeah. Could. but there's also a, a lot to be said with the fun that that like the the laughter and stuff can really be infectious when, it, when everyone's in uh a, a single yes. place yeah well there's the sure. uh, facebook uh, uh facebook video call option uh, yeah i mean that, that, that that's something i i still like the in-person thing because again you're 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 all there plus i'll i'll, I'll feed you guys and we'll, we'll have fun for pizza well uh, storm storm and hardicus we'll ship we'll ship you we'll, we'll ship you pizza Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. 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 Either yeah. that or some of Jamie L's meatballs. Maybe <laughs> later. Um now one of the things that I there are some games in there that like I didn't really care for. Um uh, Storm, were there any particular games that within the, the, the Jack Pack that you weren't you were just kind of like, eh, eh. Yes, there are some, and there was one drawing, drawing game because I can't draw for to save my life. So um, there was one of those, and I'm looking because there are a handful that I just wouldn't bother with. Um, like guess who the? Oh, no, I liked Fibbage. Fibbage was different because Fibbage you have to try to guess the lie, but there were a couple that now I just can't hang on. Let me look at those. For sure, there are some that me. Yeah, and, and I guess that's again a nice thing that each pack comes with five games. So if you if you find yourself with a dud, like at least uh, you got four others that that could be really good. Yes, for <laughs> sure. They um, were so mad she doesn't remember. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're not standing out, and I've not played. Oh God, it's been a over a year since I've played them. Oh man, we, we we I think we need to fix that. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well that was the uh my capture card and my setup for my switch to stream got broken in our move from Wisconsin uh, to Colorado. Mm -hmm. So the switch hasn't been online to stream since then. So that is my why I haven't done the jackpack stuff because I've not felt like buying them all over again because I already yeah. have them on one system. So, you know. Yeah, I, that that I don't blame you. Um, Astromedes, have um, what are your thoughts about Jack the the Jackbox games? Any fun memories? Any positive standouts? Any good games? Yeah, I mean, I I I like a lot of them. I think a lot of them are duds too. I mean, if pressed, I probably can't remember the name of the duds, but I remember there was one where it was something like everyone was on a spaceship and uh, the you had to pick the person that it was all. It almost sounds like Among Us when yeah. you describe it, yep, but yep. you know, it was like in typical kind of Jackbox fashion. And I don't know. I thought it was like kind of overly complicated and didn't land, but. Uh, ones I really did like, uh, probably like maybe either TKO or Champed Up. I I like the drawing games. We played a lot of the drawing games in the group I most typically play with with these games. Um, and uh, they and I think like Champed Up is a newer drawing game. So yeah, TKO is fun. Uh, because it's a drawing game where like the shirts against each other, you design a t-shirt is the concept yes. of TKO. And then they let you order, you know, a screen printed or whatever, uh, 
you know, uh, T-shirt or hoodie of your design, which is a really fun, clever thing. And our friends have ordered at least one TKO uh, T-shirt <laughs> from some of our games that we've played. But we, we probably had the best time with maybe TKO. More recently, uh, also Champed Up is pretty fun. It's another drawing game where you're making like a character is the thing with Champed Up. And I forgot how the mechanics work, but basically just you make these all like really kind of like odd characters and uh that one was also another really memorable drawing game that we like a lot but trivia murder party uh one and two i think are great also um the the theming is just really fun i find in trivia murder party and i don't know i i enjoy them as a trivia game Bruno Fox is making a face for those who can't see him. That makes me think he probably is not a fan of trivia murder party. <laughs> I always get killed. I have with how I, th I feel like I'm decent at trivia games. I've never won a single match of trivia murder party. Never <laughs> won one. Finally, a game I can beat your ass in. <laughs> it's because you don't already have fork knife, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, I thought but, Bruno Fox farted. That's why I was making the face. <laughs> he, well, maybe. He pained. <laughs> well, 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 maybe. Losing a lot of fingers and dying a lot in the game memories, I guess, uh, was that. But <laughs> yeah, Qu uh, Quiplash, I also like. Quiplash is fun. Um, I think I like Fibbage. Um and uh, yeah, I'm sure there's a few others, but those are definitely kind of like the standouts and the kind of like go tos among the group uh, I most often uh, play with. Nice. Um, and Simbu, I know you. I think you had mentioned before during the uh, the the pre show part of the show that only us, the Inferno cast, are <laughs> of, um, have. But remind us again. Have, do you play? Have you played any any of the, the Jackbox games? Um, so one thing before, uh, the scurry face Twitch kind of got on a real schedule for streaming and like game game wise. And, uh, it wasn't just Tyler doing all the streaming, like vice started streaming and now I've started streaming, uh, blood was streaming in there at one point. Um, Tyler would go live and he would just play just random stuff. Sometime he would play like you know, just random indie games off his piece that you find on like Steam or something like Lunch Lady, Lunch Lady Horror Game or something, you know. But he would also throw up Jackbox. Um, and the biggest one we did was Quiplash. Uh, so you can imagine it would be just like if I were to play Quiplash with all you guys. I know you guys very well, just like I know my SF brothers and sisters very well. So you can imagine the amount of nsfw that went on during those quiplash games just <laughs> tearing each other to pieces um with the questions and then of course the answers uh but all of course all in good fun we all had a good you know a good old belly laugh uh over it because it was the like i said that was really the only one i kind of enjoyed getting in on um i tried a couple of the other ones didn't really care for them that when he would do them, but he would try and change things up. But Quiplash seemed to be the big one that we all enjoyed doing because we all just got to talk trash to each other. Nice. Yeah, I I do have to say Quiplash is, is a uh, favorite of mine. I also enjoy Fibbage quite a bit. Um, Jason the 13th, what is uh, thoughts on Jack Pack? What are your favorites? What are your not so favorites? Oh, I hate them all. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Why uh, do you play? So... <laughs> Why do you play? <laughs> because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so my all-time favorite out of all the ones we played is the murder party, unfortunately, for Inferno Fox. Now, the most controversial within this group, my least favorite is the rapping one, the Madversity rapping one, because I suck at making raps, and that is the one that I do the worst in all of them. <laughs> which is odd, I, which I think is odd, because you you are actually a very good writer. I've read your mm -hmm. work, so I you would think that it'd be something where you would just be, but maybe I know it, 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 maybe it's more just the genre of rap itself itself. It could you know be. What I mean? But I do very much enjoy Split the Room. Uh, 
the job job and one that I like a lot that nobody has brought up yet and I had the the Junktopia the one where they give you random items and you oh I really like Junktopia items. too I forgot that about is it such a yeah, fun yeah. one <laughs> Mm -hmm. nice. <laughs> I really like that one. But yeah, as for the worst ones, I know we've played a couple that like just eh. Like um, what was the one we just played where you have to drop then the order from oh like, court court zord or something? Yeah. Quick quick sword. There are rounds that we have so much fun with, and then there are rounds that you're going, uh, this is just garbage. Like complete garbage because you have no clue whatsoever. And I know it's supposed to make it fun that they're these complete random topics that nobody knows, but sometimes those it's a hit or miss with that one. It's a mid mid game because you can have fun with it, and then there's the rounds where you're just going, Yeah, this is just garbage, and you're don't it's know what guessing, to do with it. Literally yep. guessing. Uh, cause that quit Zord is where you, it's like a trivia game. You have to or put in an order from, uh, earliest to latest, or, or for example, like Super Bowl teams, um, that have won in the NFL. And so like the first answer would be the Green Bay Packers. And then the next answer, uh, for 2025 would be the, the Chicago Bears. I can't even joke. <laughs> that's, that's not even, <laughs> I can't even jokingly say but, that. Yeah. But, but <laughs> Yep, that would be <laughs> worst ones. I don't know. I haven't played all of them, so I can't say that there's any that are like, oh my god, so horribly bad. I'd never play them again. But yeah, and I'm like Astrobedes too, where like if if they're there, I can't think of their names all offhand. Like I've probably repressed the memory and thus can't think of the name. So I I think it's great that like as developers they get to like release these games in packs and like work on them. Yeah, kind of like they get to throw a bunch of stuff at the wall. Like they can take <laughs> a weird chance with something that's like really weird because it's like oh this is just one of five games we're releasing in this and, pack. So I think few... it sounds like a really fun way of working. Absolutely. There are a few on the website that I see that like everyone else when you're looking at it going, I want to try that one. I want to try that <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, rounding us out with this particular question, and I've, I've got one uh, for you guys after the fact. Uh, Hardicus, your thoughts on the Jack Box Party Packs? Uh, I, I haven't played too many of them. Um like we were talking before we started recording here, my favorite and really only uh, memories of it is messing around with Storm Rose Sky's husband on it, like <laughs> just taking shots at each other. And it's, I do remember that being a very fun time. We had, if I remember right, we had a bunch of screenshots from that too, that are probably not safe for work uh, to show here. <laughs> yeah, I, I still have those saved somewhere. Yeah, that 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 one that I shared was one of about twenty that act that I looked up beforehand. That was the only one that I could share. Everything else, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I either was very political and very mean to a, a, a certain horrible person, or just rife full of swears. And we try to avoid that here on on the hmm. broadcast whenever possible. <laughs> yeah, um, that's my uh, my my memories playing really is I, I think i played some with my arizona group friend but i can't remember uh too much about that one it's the only one that sticks in my mind is when we played uh at your place in front of flex nice yeah and, and these are a ton of fun to play at, at, at like in-person parties and everything like that but also uh as storm had mentioned uh also uh you know playing through live streams at some point uh, talking about it, I, I kind of like the idea of actually doing that maybe with the Inferno cast here just to, just for fun one or two times and I could live stream it on YouTube or Twitch or what have you. Uh, I, I, I can't imagine how, how crazy this would be like because um, myself and Mobster, we used to have uh, house parties like all the time when we were in our 20s. Like how crazy the, the parties would be where we would do the, the Jackbox games and, instead of like whatever else that that we had. Uh, Jason the Thirteenth, what is one of your favorite memories of one of those old school house parties that that we had? Oh, <laughs> uh, probably the top memories probably aren't quite safe for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, um, let's, let's definitely there, try and keep it PG thirteen if we yeah, can. There was a quite quite a few drinking party ones, so yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Circle of death and and what have you. Mm-hmm. Uh, sir. Was sir. I, what, I I do have to say a, a quick drinking one. Was it your house that we were playing? Um, I think it was a Madden game, and whenever you got a touchdown, the other person had to take a shot. <laughs> <laughs> mm, i don't remember was that story. your house or was that someone else see that's Pro- the problem probably someone else because i don't see us <laughs> playing madden at um my, ah, uh, mobster might have been might have had it, it up. yep with with mobster they could have been that's, a, that's i don't po- remember <laughs> that's possible uh astromedes how about you favorite favorite party memory uh back at one of the the house parties back in the in the day Oh man, um, it's really all a blur, quite literally. Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, in in general, uh, I just remember like it felt like you know it's, we sound very I'm gonna sound very old man here, but it's like we're we were the first generation that like kind of came into adulthood playing being really fluent in all these games and stuff. I feel like. So like stuff like land parties and the kind of stuff we did and everything kind of similar other side of the coin, whatever console based sort of land party almost you could say. But, uh, you know, like that, that was kind of like a very particular uh, time in place thing for our kind of like generation that we partook in, I feel like. Because one of my favorite memories with symbol, but we I've mentioned it maybe once every five episodes but i don't care we'll mention it this one too it's got to be the uh the halo parties when simba would grab his 27 inch crt and he had have his xbox and his copy of halo and uh mobster would have his and we'd have that on, on our tv and the one time the one time i think our buddy bill brought his and uh, we had 11 people at at our place at, and we were doing like 11 man matches and everything. And it was, mm-hmm. it was crazy. Simbu, is that your, your answer for the, 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 the parties? <laughs> um, I, I actually think at one point we had four TVs and four Xboxes. I think we I ended up actually getting four, I four, and doubt four it. at one point. I wouldn't. But it would have been. It, it would have only happened like once, which is probably yes. why Wheaton. You wouldn't. And, we wouldn't have remembered it because I think we've gotten three and three multiple times. Because and the only reason I say that is the the time that you did the three and three, uh, somebody brought a fourth Xbox, and I ganked my ex's TV from the bedroom, little yes, seventeen inch thing, and we we connected and and through. Uh, I think Randy and somebody else on that that seventeen inch TV. And then the rest of us were on the, the the bigger TVs. I think that I think that's what it was. I they, think so because we were. I think we were so excited because we were so close to having a full sixteen player rumble. Yep. Um. That was fun. Obviously, obviously that's the Halo a console land party. Land party. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. It was. <laughs> oh yeah. It was. Um. Obviously, the console land parties are always we're always a, we're always a fun night. Um. Obviously the. Ballroom Blitz always stands out. <laughs> that that qualifies as a party game night. Um, oh, Rock Band and, Nights! Oh my gosh! Yes, the old Ballroom Blitz, which we've have, which Inferno Fox has shown that okay. clip on the on the, on the uh, YouTube here. So, um, but honestly, just I don't know. It was for me. I was one. I was. You know, surprise, surprise, judging by now, I was not very popular. I was hated. So um, for me, the memory was the best memory was just getting together with a bunch of other nerds and people <laughs> like me and having fun. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And, and that sort of feeling is definitely something that almost seems like it's a a, a nerd feeling uh, that that sort of outcast but you, the, the, the wonderful thing about being an adult is you really learn that we are like you and you are like us and there there's always a place there's always a place we were the last nerds that weren't cool <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> and by not caring about being cool we were cool 
So there you go. Um, we were trendsetters, surprisingly. We were. <laughs> um, Storm, how about you? What are some of your favorite um, mo mine and mobster party memories of uh, of yours that, that uh, you might have? Oh, wow. Um, on our way to one of them, we got pulled over for speeding. And the officer was a real, real nice fella because he made my husband get into the back of his squad while he opened our trunk to uh, check out our trunk and, you know, ask why we were going so fast. So that stands out. Um, lovely state police over there in Illinois. Nothing nice happened. job, Inferno Fox. Yep. Luckily, <laughs> nothing he came of that. But he, they ticket. explained that they were going to, to Fox's place, and the cop knew it and let him go. <laughs> yep. And just, you know, because that was back in the northern Illinois days, NIU days, so my best memory of those parties are the, the pizza and donut nugget things that you got from whatever pizzeria was over there and watching you and mobster do the uh lion face rawr, da, 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 you know from <laughs> those movies Jane uh, and bob strike back that's right yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep it was great so those are some of the things that stand out other than the last one very last like smash tournament that we were at and when the one person won and and mobster did not win and his reaction just stands out because that is just mobster and i love him so there hmm. we go <laughs> <laughs> I remember, in, in a fun twist of fate jamie owls tell tells mobster it's like come on smile and oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Yes, I it. It. oh my god yep <laughs> <laughs> i felt yep. it you, i felt you, it <laughs> I, I'm not surprised. Oh man! Yeah, I, I mean, just the, just the 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 love that I had for a a woman telling a, a guy to smile and to to get that sort of sort of mm -hmm. thing. Just everything with that was just win. <laughs> yeah, it's like how do you like it? <laughs> yeah. uh, Jamie Owls, how about you? What what are some of your favorite memories with the the, the parties and whatnot? Overall, in general, I just have, you know, fond memories of just having a good time, laughing, being with people. But there is one in particular that I really like. It was a few years back. This was before COVID. Uh, Storm Roll Sky, Hearty Kiss, and her husband were at our place playing um one of the jackpot games I can't remember which but I remember the question was when you have to fill out the answer that who would it be that would make it awkward to give you a sponge bath and hearty kiss wrote down uh storm most guy's husband's name and he wrote down hearty kiss name and then when the results came on the screen it just seemed like both of them thought of one another and it was just hilarious. And I think everyone, you know, the the full 30 minutes, everyone was just laughing because <laughs> it was so damn funny. I don't think anybody played for the next half hour because we just couldn't stop laughing. I think I had to pause it at that point, if I'm remembering right. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just like it was a you fantastic know, moment. Yeah, it's just one of those moments where you're just, you know, laughing and peeing on yourself. So not to say that I did, but mm -hmm. next, yeah. We yeah I, that sounds pretty sus. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, and, and of course, I, I saved a picture of it. And I'm looking at it, but I can't share it because it has real, real full names on there. So <laughs> that's too funny. Um. And Hardicus, how about you? What's sort of one of your favorite moments? Um, you know that the one Jamie just uh, Jamie Alls just kind of threw out there was one of my favorites. I do remember one, and I don't want to say it's a favorite moment, but it's it always sticks out of my mind. Is this was back when you still lived in um, 
I think in your dad's house. Um, oh dang! That's yeah, a, it was an old, old it's an a, old one, oldie and a classic. And our our friend Katie, I'm sure you know which one I'm talking about. Uh, were and most of the people here know how Katie and I feed off of each other, just <laughs> annoying each other. Uh, we got Astromedes so mad he threatened to punch me in the face. <laughs> I threaten to punch people in the face a million percent more than I ever punched anyone in the face, which is <laughs> oh, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it was all bark and no bite, but it was I, that moment has always stuck with me as being one of the funny ones. And it just shows how long we've all known one another, man. I I, I do I, have one more. It's not really a moment from your party, but since it fits into the topic of party games. If you ever want to find out who your friends are and who likes you and who doesn't in one of these party games, I haven't played the new one, but the original Dokopan Kingdom will will absolutely show you which one of your friends has no problem stepping on your corpse. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, and tan genitals and stepping on corpses aside... <laughs> just these party games and everything took definitely a lot of fun um and I, I do like the idea of doing a a, a live cast with with us we'll, we'll figure that out all, off offline at some point but let us know in the comments section below your favorite party games for mario party jackbox and beyond and yeah just a, one last quick shout out to our fantastic cast and crew uh, thank you again for, for joining us in, in this fun discussion. Um, we will be off next Tuesday, but we will be back on Tuesday, May 21st for more Inferno cast fun. Thank you again, everybody. And again, thank you to the audience for joining us and have a great day.